السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم Welcome to the council I am Suleiman Shah and I'll be speaking to a few bays this evening on the program inshallah Right so it's the first live program post the month of uh, Ramadan and we are coming to you live from our studios here in uh, Sunning Hill, Johannesburg, South Africa You may have seen the promotion uh, The topic of discussion this evening is Erturul and uh, we don't want to talk about uh, the series in itself from the perspective of it being a TV series. Uh, there are thousands of TV series uh, out there that people can watch. We live in the era of Netflix and, and what, what. You spoil for choice, really. But there's no doubt that uh, this Erturul or Dirilish Erturul series has gripped the imaginations of many people. It's captivated people. It's... Uh, it's gone to the point that uh, people here in South Africa even came to the Eidgar dressed in the, in the garb, right? And not, not just the hat like, uh, like uh, you see here, but everything, the whole suit, that whole leather suit. And I heard in some places they even came on horseback uh, just to give it the full uh, Arturul effect. So we thought it would be a good time to, to talk about this craze, if you like, in common language, or the phenomenon in more sophisticated language. What is it about this Arturul series? Now, in terms of you, the viewers out there at home, there are those who may have watched it or are watching it, and there are those who may not have watched it but have heard about it. But nonetheless, what is it about this series that has gripped people? What is it that makes it stand out? Why are people so fascinated with it? it it's long, you know, it's five seasons, 150 episodes. Every episode is almost an hour long from what I heard. So it's, it's like 150 hours of your time. How is it that people are dedicating that much of time to watching this? And that is what we're trying to unpack today uh, on the program, inshallah. My guest in studio is uh, Ijaz Bey. Oh, Ijaz Khan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right, so Ijaz is a colleague of mine from Radio Islam, but he's a big Arturul fan, and we're going to be talking to him a little later uh, in the program, inshallah. But first up, I want to cross over to the United Kingdom, because this Arturul phenomenon is not only something that's uh, hit South Africa, right, uh, in a big way, but in many parts of the world. And I was in the UK uh, the last 10 days of Ramadan doing programs at different masjids, and I can tell you that, uh, that Avallah, is, it's like, you know, you see the youngsters talking to one another. Next minute, there's a thump of the chest. Avallah, babe. And uh, you can see it's a craze there. It's, it's, it's really followed and people are captivated by it. So Nadim Siddat from Bartley in the UK, uh, he's behind the erturulonline.co.uk website. And they do the translations into English. And, and he was also really intrigued by it. And he did more research on the series and the history behind it. And he joins us on the line this evening from uh, the UK. Nadeem, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program, Ben. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, you know, firstly, tell, to tell our viewers. Uh, yes. W w when did you, uh, you know, really become fascinated with the Arturul series? And, and, and why? What captivated you about it? Sorry, Sheikh, you know, we were, when we were testing, it was very clear and I could hear you properly, but for some reason I can't hear you very clearly now. All right, let me repeat that. W what is it about the Arturul series that captivates you? Uh, I think the uh, series, the, uh, what they were trying to do was uh, portray the message of Islam and what mm. they were doing, they, they tried to do it completely differently. Uh, um, and they've done it through, obviously, um, TV. Uh, and you can see that through the actual series, the f uh, five seasons, where Erturul, they mentioned about his missions uh, and his struggle, uh, struggle to give da'wah, how to bring uh, people towards Islam, um, and, and the responsibility he had um, for, his, for his tribe, um, and not just his tribe uh, who are Muslims, but also pe people, that, the people in his tribe uh, who are also non-Muslims. Now, do, do you know perhaps why they decided, decided to start with Arturul? Because the person who's really renowned in history is the son Osman uh, or Uthman, and that's where we get the Ottoman Khilafat from. Uh, many say that uh, when you study that which is authentically related in history, there isn't much about Arturul apart from the fact that he was a brave warrior and that he was the father of Uthman and that he was the leader of the Kaye tribe. 
Is there any one particular reason why they started with him and, and not with, with Osman? Uh, I think um, they also wanted to po um, portray the life of uh, his father, uh, Suleiman Shah. Mm -hmm. um, I know I, a lot of brothers of Shilore, or all those viewers who are watching at the moment uh, will know of uh, Suleiman Shah. Uh, a couple of years ago when the Battle of Aleppo was taking place, uh, he, he was actually buried in, in, in um, Aleppo uh, and, so, and they had to move his, his shrine over towards uh, yes. the Turkey, 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 Turkey side. This happened maybe about a couple of, a couple of years ago, maybe around uh, 20, 2015. Uh, so I think they wanted to start with uh, Suleiman Shah, uh, and now obviously they've moved on to Ed Rule. They showed uh, Suleiman Shah in um, season one, uh, and then he passed away in uh, in, in season two. Uh, but I really I don't want to disappoint viewers, but the Ed Rule series I'd say um, around 98 to 99 percent is uh, is actually fictional, uh, and they've tried to they've. The characters that they've used in, in, in the series, um, a lot of them were actual people in real life. Uh, and what they've done is they've just brought it together um, and brought a series uh, with five seasons um, to try and um, show Islam um, in, a, in a true way. And I think they've done it very, very successfully. Yes, that, that was actually going to be my, my next question. You know, authentic versus yeah. dramatization. When, when you're doing a drama series, you have to bring in okay. drama, you have to bring in the fiction element to create suspense for continuity, okay. etc. But I think you, you've hit the nail on the head that, that broadly speaking, Arturul exists authentically as a historic figure, the son of Suleiman Shah, the father of, of Osman, the, the founder of the Ottoman Khilafat. And then there are yeah. others like Turgut and, and, and those that do exist. But in between, I mean, all the gaps have been filled up by, by, by fiction, right? Yeah, so... Um I mean, like you mentioned, um, you've got uh, obviously you've got uh, Suleiman Shah, who was uh, who was an actual uh, f uh, father, the father of um, uh, Erturul. Then you have um, Erturul himself. You have Halima, who was his who was his wife, um, and then they had um, they had their sons, Usman, um, Safchi, Gunduz, who are also who are also um, real actual people. Unfortunate thing is, there's no actual history. There's no written history, mm. um, so there's nothing that we can that people can actually go back to and try and build um, a movie, a series, or what they've done here. So, like I said, they've done a very, very good job. Uh, like for example, in season two, uh, towards the end of season two, uh, Erturul went with his um, Alps. They went to the borders, the Byzantine borders, um, and they met with um, with a family. Um, and they had a son called Sheikh Edebali. Now, I don't know if a lot of uh, viewers of Ertuğrul will actually remember this, but Sheikh Edebali is a very, very huge uh, figure in, in Turkey. He was the actual um, uh, the teacher of Usman. Mm. And some say, if you if you read into Sheikh Edebali, uh, it says that Usman actually, when he visited um, Edebali's grave, uh, he had like he went into like a, a motion where he saw. Um, like a, a crescent coming out of Sheikh Edebali's um, from his chest, and he entered into his chest. And they said that this was the beginning of the of the Osman Empire. Now, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, the series started airing in 2014 in in Turkey, but. It seems like it's only in the last year or so that it's become viral, to use today's terminology, that it's become a hit, it's become a craze in, in many parts of the world. Th that's one part of, of my question. The other part is also, I understand there are other series in the Turkish language that deal with Ottoman history. There's a series on uh, so, uh, Khalifa Abdul Hamid, etc. What, in your opinion, is it about this particular series, Erturul, that has made it so popular, especially in the last year or so? Personally, for me, I think it's how the how the how the producers have brought out the characters and how they've showed how they showed these characters and they've showed these characters they portray, portrayed them in such a way that characters that you're supposed to hate you actually like mm. and once they've they've been killed off the series you actually miss their presence on on set. For example, you have um, Emir Sadat in Kopek, <laughs> who was who they portray as a very very evil person. Uh, through season, from beginning of season two, going all the way to all the way to season four, um, and in history it shows um, 
although he was a he was a Muslim, he was actually a very very evil person, and he, just to use him as an example and to show how how deep they've tried to um, how deep they've tried to portray characters in this actual series. Uh, for example, uh, there's an there's an there's a, there's a, a part where it shows where Sadatin Quebec actually making his own knife. Now, if you look into history, um, he was he. Th- this is what he used to do in his in his in his spare time. Mm-hmm. He used to actually um, make things out of wood. Um, it was his actual pastime. So it just sh- goes to show the detail that the producers have gone into to try and portray portray these. Uh, these um, these characters. Now, if oh, we talk about Arturu fans, if you want to call it that, what has been the result of, of, of following the series? I, for example, know of many people who have started to read up about history. Uh, they've been intrigued and they started to go, even if it be to Google, and, and look up about the Ottoman Khilafat, read more about Turgut and Arturul and Suleiman Shah and the Mongols and the Crusaders and what happened in that particular period of time and, and the Kayi tribe. Do, do you find it, uh, you know, did, did you get a similar kind of response when interacting with, with fans of the series? And what else have, would you say has been the result of people watching this the series? So I, what, I, what we've seen is we get a lot of people that messages every single day. We receive emails, messages all day um, asking us when the next episode is going to come out, when the next episode episode's going to come out. But obviously one, it's only once the actual episode is released in, in Turkey that we can actually translate the episode in English uh, for our viewers. And we get over 100, over 100,000 viewers every single week, every single week without fail. Um, and what we've seen is a lot of people are... Uh, are wanting to know more about, uh, wanting to know, get, find out more on the Uthman Empire. Uh, we have so many people who are trying to organize uh, ziyarats to Turkey, to Istanbul, where they can visit the grave of uh, Ertuğrul in Sogut, uh, where they can go to Barsha and see uh, the masjids over there. They can go to the grave of Turgut Alp. Um, and within Turkey itself, uh, you might have troubled yourself. There's so much. There's so much to see in in Turkey itself, um, and people are, are going into into further detail. I mean, even if you look at the, uh, our Haram Sharif in in Makkah, uh, we still have the Ottoman Ottoman design in the Masjid itself. Mm. But furthermore, onto that, you see, you know how just yesterday I put a question onto our uh, onto our Instagram Instagram page on um, our Entrul online Instagram page, and I was asking asking our followers what they had learned from watching. Uh, the the series and you know some of the answers that were coming really touched us you know where people were telling us that you know they were a tv show was teaching them how to respect their elders and to respect the people around them uh, how to have so- strong trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i remember in season three where uh Ertrul, his tribe they had nothing they had nothing um, and the tribe were coming back to Ertuğrul's uh, mother and saying to the mother that, you know, we don't have anything. What are you going to do for us? You know, we've migrated so far and we don't have food. We don't have nothing. Uh, and Ertuğrul went to uh, to the bazaar. And when he went to the bazaar, he went with three 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 dirhams, or I can't remember what they called the money at that time. And um, they were expecting him to go to the um, to the bazaar and buy food for the tribe. But when he went to the bazaar, he used that three uh, three coins to free a slave, and then we see yeah. a few episodes later why, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala rewarded him uh, because he freed the slave. Uh, that slave found Ertuğrul a gold mine. So instead of buying maybe two three bags of of wheat of bread, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because he freed the slave, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave him a whole gold mine. Yeah. Brother Nadeem, I'm going to ask you to hold the line there. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, inshallah, we continue the discussion. No commercial, exactly. Welcome back. So we're talking about the Arturul series, the phenomenon. As I mentioned earlier on, we're not talking here about it as a review or, you know, like how you would have a movie review and that kind of thing. We're talking about why it's captivated people, what's in it. And our guest on the line from the UK on Skype is Nadim Sidat. Um, he is 
uh, passionate about it. He's involved in doing the English translations. And my guest in studio is uh, Ijaz Khan. He's also a big fan. Just let me just bring you in uh, at this particular point. Uh, how did you get, uh, I don't know, attracted, uh, interested uh, w when it came to this series? Very interesting story, Molana. Um, basically, I was watching the build-up to the Khabib versus McGregor fight. And they kept showing uh, as they were training and getting ready for the fight. And they showed Khabib running on a treadmill with a little phone on the front. And he was watching a series. And his trainer was like, this guy only knows uh, Erturul, Erturul. So I was like, what? Then I, I tried to find out more. And that is how I found it. I asked more about it on Facebook and other social media as to, to find out more about the series. And there were only a handful of people who had heard of it that time. And that is basically how we got into it. Just by watching something else altogether came across the Arturul series. All right, so that, very interesting. I mean, that even Khabib <laughs> was, was, was watching Arturul and watching it whilst he's busy exercising for his big match. Yeah. But uh, once you started watching it, uh, what, what was different for you? What stood out for you? Well, Mula, <clears throat> in today's time, there are lots of superheroes. You get your Iron Man, your Superman, your Batman, all of these things. But there isn't an actual real hero that Muslims can look up to. There isn't a series that can captivate and bring all of this to the fore. What we see with this series of Erturul is that in a time where Muslims have never been so, so huge in number, but are still looking for a figure to, to bring hope. And like our guest mentioned earlier on, uh, Nadim spoke about it not being 100% factual, but just the basis of the series itself. They're in a time where the main, I, f I feel the main, main issue with it is... Uh, that it brings hope. Mm. That is the main theme here, that a group of people in a faraway land with little or no resources were able to eventually capture the world. And when the series was made, Molana, it was made just to talk to the Turkish people to remind them of their vast history. But what we seen, and they didn't realize initially, was that the history of the Turks was actually the history of the Ummah at large. So that is why this series, even though meant initially for the Turkish nation, has captivated the world and people all over the world, I don't think the creators of the series realized, maybe now they do, that the series has really corrupt the world. Nadeem, if I can come back to you now, doing the translations, what, what does it entail? I mean, uh, how, how do you go about doing it? Uh, it? It must be something that's a bit complex. That again, please. I say, you know, doing the translations, the, the, the episode comes out in Turkey. You guys put now the subtitles, if you like, in English. So those who watch it in English can, can understand. Uh, how, what's the process? How do you go about doing it? Uh, uh, it's a long night. So the episode gets released on Wednesday in Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, and then all night we're awake. awake um, we translate it. We produce the video ourselves. Um, it's a long process. Uh, it takes all night. Uh, alhamdulillah, the good thing is our friends and family is uh, from our friends and family in Turkey, uh, because the series uses doesn't actually just use the Turkish language; it also uses uh, the Ottoman dialect. So therefore, okay. we need to have translators who are able to translate the Ottoman dialect as well. So alhamdulillah, uh, that allows us to translate uh, very precisely. Alhamdulillah. There's a lot of uh, similar words to Arabic and Urdu, right? I'm just thinking Hurriyat, uh, Albatta, uh, th th those kind of things. Yes, Adalet. Adalet, <laughs> yes, that's the famous one, Adalet. <laughs> Everybody loves that Adalet. <laughs> Intikam. Yeah, besides, besides translation into English, to, to your knowledge, you know, which are the other languages in which this has become very popular, this series? My mom's from Zimbabwe, she speaks Portuguese, so I'm trying to get her to translate it for me in Portuguese, but <laughs> she's not listening. Um, but we do have a lot of messages, a lot of requests from people. Um, but uh, sometimes, you know, we can't just, we can't just get, we can get hold of translators very easy, but the translators need to really understand the, the series, the episodes, before they can actually translate. So if we find the right people, we're willing to translate into different languages. But like I said, they need to understand the, the episodes before we can, we can arrange that. Now, you know, the, but, these terminologies uh, that they use all so frequently, you know, Eivallah and Bayi or Bayim, 
Uh, is this is this still there? Is it still found in Turkish culture today? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, when I, when not, well, now when I speak to my friends in Turkey, I always uh, address them as be. Um, and uh, we always use in all that that type of uh, terminology. But when I speak to them, they do they do they do still use that, use them use them words. And that, that um, it's not sign? been lost um, in time, um, so they are still using it. The, the chess sign do they still do that in Turkey? Uh, some do, some don't. Uh, but you'll see uh, one of the Alps, Abdurrahman Alp. Uh, yes. If you ever look on his Instagram page and if you follow him on Instagram. Uh, many of his photos, he's always got his hand on his chest. Um, and nowadays, when you go to the masjid, and the Imam Sahib's mentioning um, the Prophet Sallallahu name, you see people in the masjid here locally, they've also got their hand on their chest. So They picked up the mannerism. <laughs> they, they picked that up. So you know, to, to, to It's flip growing and it's spreading. <laughs> to, to flip onto the other side of the coin, right, and talk about some of the concerns that people have raised. I've heard some people saying, actually, when I was in the UK during Ramadan, that, you know, because it's so long and there's so many episodes, people are, are spending too much time watching a TV series. So on the one hand, you hear people saying, you know, it's one of those TV series where you don't find nudity, you don't find promiscuity. Uh, it's very morals driven, very values driven. On the other hand, people are saying it's taking too much of time. It's providing too much of escapism. It's, it's exaggerating El Turul's role in history. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm not alim or anything, so I don't want uh, to <laughs> give a masala on uh, TV or anything. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's people going to be watching sports. There's going to be people watching maybe the news or something. So if they're watching something that benefits them, then benefits them, then alhamdulillah. And, you know, we were, we had, uh, we were still hitting the same amount of numbers in, in Ramadan. Uh, and what we decided to do is we decided to uh, start some fundraising to do something, to give something back um, as sadaqah. So uh, through the charity, uh, just before Ramadan, I visited uh, Mozambique and through all our viewers, we managed to raise over 3,000 pounds for the Cyclone Idai uh, in Mozambique, which I traveled myself to, to transfer over the aid. Uh, and, and then in Ramadan, we fundraised uh, over 10,000 pounds uh, through our followers, through our viewers, uh, which equaled around 10,000 hot meals inside Syria. So, you know, maybe people were watching in Ramadan, maybe people were not uh, using the time wisely, some, might, some may say, uh, and they were watching Air Turul. But Alhamdulillah, you know, we, did, uh, we managed to uh, do some good work, we managed to feed those in need in Syria. So Alhamdulillah, uh, and who knows what's come out of them watching in Ramadan, maybe they've started to recite more Quran. Uh, as we were speaking earlier, maybe they've started, decided that they want to learn more about not just uh, the Uthman Empire, but also about the, the seer of Anawi Final question before I let you go, uh, Nadim. Uh, we know the series has come to an end in, in, in Turkey, right? I think it came to an end uh, at the end of May. That was the last episode of season five. There is all this talk now that there's going to be a follow-up series, Dirish Osman, focusing now on Ertul San Osman, the founder of the Ottoman Khilafat. Is, is there any accuracy to those reports? Uh... So what they, from what I know of, what they wanted to do was uh, season five wasn't really supposed to come out. Uh, what they wanted to do was uh, end their either season three or season four. Mm. And what they wanted to do was uh, create a movie uh, which bridged the gap between um, the different time difference between Uth um, Erturul and Osman. And then they wanted to start uh, Dilish Osman where they showed Osman... Uh, growing up but what's happened is that the ratings have hit so high in turkey that the producer asked that look i want another season so they decided to create another season that's why if you look in if you look deeply into season five there's a lot of fictional characters that were brought in uh, but there are talks um, i don't want to confirm anything uh, but inshallah it is looking likely that around september to november time um Dirilish usman should be released um, in Turkey. Brother Nadim, shukran so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Jazakallah khair for having us, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Remember, you know, duas. And make duas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from all of us, inshallah. We don't know who's... In fact, I need to mention this before I go. Uh, one of our followers, she was from Brazil. From Brazil. She's been watching the series every week. And alhamdulillah, 
a couple of months ago she accepted Islam. Subhanallah. So it just shows what kind of difference, uh, as the brother Ijaz was saying, it just shows the Muhammad Bozdag, the producers, they they thought that this was only going to stay in Turkey. It's come out of Turkey, it's, it's reaching all four corners of the world, and people are accepting Islam. Alhamdulillah, you know. So Allah Are you getting a lot of inshallah. feedback, a lot of questions from non-Muslims who are watching the series with, with your English subtitles? Oh, of course, uh, we get a lot of people asking, uh, because especially in season five, uh, you see see the where they call him the Hajjah, who's the Sheikh. Mm. Um, deliver lectures to the students, deliver lessons to the students where he's teaching the students the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every week there's been a different name um, and people have been asking us questions people have been asking us um, if we can get them a Quran in English sent to them um, and we've been facilitating this for them as well so we've been sending them a Quran we've been trying to send them articles um, and this was our intention when we began this as well so Alhamdulillah, you know um, we just make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts from all of us, inshallah. Inshallah, brother Nadeem, shukran so much for your time. Zakallah khair for having us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. That was Nadeem Sidat. He is from Batley in the UK. He joined us there on the line on Skype and uh, he uh, is doing the translations for the Arturul series on arturulonline.co.uk with the English uh, subtitles. Now we come back to Ijaz Bay in, in studio. Ijaz, a little later in the program, I will talk about uh, the South African context and how yeah. it's taken on in South Africa <clears throat> sector. But I just want to touch on one point and get your perspective here. Uh, Non-Muslims watching the series, the one concern I had was that, okay, maybe a bit too much of fighting, you know, reinforcing that whole, uh, uh, you know, belief about Muslims being bloodthirsty. Mm -hmm. But then it gives a lot of context to why the fighting was necessary yeah. and who the aggressors really were. And, and that even in fighting in the midst of being on the defensive, on, on the, in the midst of being the oppressed, they still stuck to the ideals of justice and fairness. That's it, Molana. And the main thing is that you notice that fighting was always their last resort. Mm. They would try every means possible to sort out a, a situation amicably. And if all else fails, then the sword would talk. And I was just, <laughs> I was just realizing, you know, there was a couple of times while Brother Nadim was talking that I, I felt like, cutting the Skype line because spoiler alerts after spoiler <laughs> alerts. Some of us are not in season five yet, Monana. So, uh, yeah, but it was cool, really cool listening to how he's getting feedback from all over the world. And um, it's really cool. All right. Before I go for the break, I want to open up the line. 011-086-7777. Now, remember, we take a very particular focus on the program this evening. We're not doing a, a series review like how they do movie reviews. This is not a Barry Ronger type uh, program. <laughs> uh, this is a very specific series that has captured the imaginations and it's become a craze, if you like, amongst Muslims and non-Muslims, as you heard. And we, want, we are trying to understand why. What's in this particular series amongst thousands of, of uh, you know, more, more uh, better promoted series that come out of the US, that come out of Hollywood, that come out of Bollywood, that you would find everywhere else. What is it about this particular series that has gripped people, and especially Muslims? That's what we're unpacking and we're trying to understand. So I want your comments in that regard. The lines are open, 011-086-7777. We take a break. All right, welcome back. So we're talking about the Arturul series. We're trying to understand the phenomenon. Why has it become so popular with people? Why has it gripped people? It's lengthy episodes. It's a lengthy series. Why is it that people have taken out the time? Uh, we spoke to Nadim Siddharth at length in the first two segments of the program. We got uh, Ijaz Bey uh, in the council uh, with us. And the lines are open. I want to hear from you. But as I said, we don't want to just talk about it from the perspective of, oh, I like this character. I don't like that character. This is not a, a, a series review or a, or a Barry Ronger type program, like I mentioned. We're talking about the phenomenon. What is it about this particular program that captivates people? What is it that, uh, that intrigued you? What has become very popular is, uh, okay, let's go to the caller. Caller, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Gee, where are you calling from, brother? From the Niger, brother, okay, you speaking? Yes, talk to me. What, what is it about Arturul that, that captivated you? It's uh, something which I ended up watching with my entire family, my kids, 12 and 9. Mm -hmm. And it's the amazing thing that they take away from the series. Um, uh, small little, like, uh, they put Allah first in everything before they do anything. Okay. And I see those small little changes in, uh, in my kids' lives as well. Whenever they do something, has a bismillah. Uh, Hadi Bismillah. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Jazakallah uh, for that, Abdul Karim. Really appreciate the call. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. The lines are still open. 011-086-7777. It's just off the cuff. Yeah. How many terminologies have you picked up? Eva Allah. Eva hey, Mashallah. Uh, Eva Allah. Chok shukur. Um, someone said a dialect. There's, there's, there's so many okay, now. Okay, think about it. I'm going to go to the next caller. <laughs> caller, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Gee, brother, where are you calling from? I'm uh, calling from Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape. Talk to me. You know, Moana, um, I actually grew up in Pakistan and I've been living in South Africa for the last uh, 30, 35 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never watched any film in my entire life in South Africa. Okay. It's the first one which myself and my wife have been watching together. Right. And I must say, uh, you know, we need to have somebody from among this generation to conquer Jerusalem once again. You know, I think uh, our youth, and even including my kids, you know, they are so taken up by these modern heroes, you know. And I always tell them every day, you know, during the school holidays, they must sit with me and sit with us, in fact, and watch this uh, serial together with us so that we can, you know, light that fire once again among the youth of today. So for you, it's about the passion that they Rabbi have Allah. to further the cause of Islam. Is that it? Uh, brother, are you still there? Okay, the brother is gone. The lines are open, 011, 086. Please again, Molana. Okay, you're still there. I say for you then, in other words, it's about the passion that they have to further the cause of Islam. Absolutely, you know, and I think the way we uh, raise our kids in, in this country and the way the education system is, we don't really get exposed to learn much about Islam besides going to Madrasa for a short period of time and if you do not really uh, you know uh, inspire the kids to read the history of Islam what actually happened you know from the era of uh, the Khulafa Rashidin to up till now uh, especially Ottoman Empire and various dynasties you know in the Islamic history if we do not have the knowledge of the history how can we really inspire our kids and how do we have that vigor and spirit among ourselves to go back and you know get what belongs to us Indeed. Jazakumullah for the call, brother. We go to the next caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, whilst we wait for the callers, any further words you came up with? Soyle, speak. Hello. <laughs> Jeez, caller, you live on air. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Some G sister. Am I on air now? Yes, you're live on air. We're listening to you. Oh, alaikum salam, Alana. I did like to say I was so engrossed in this program. Mm. Yes, and also I was highly impressed with the martyrdom of Ertugel. However, when I'm doing um, now, uh, before and now uh, Googling of the actors in this uh, series, I became highly disillusioned. Mm. Uh, I, my question is, your guest speaker said so many people have come forward and said they want to accept Islam. My question is, why is it not that the actors themselves, so many of them, had not latched on Islam despite what they have been portraying on in this series? All right. I think it's a pertinent point that you raised. Jazakallah for the call. I think what the call, what the sister is saying, and just I've heard this, this comment by others as well, that uh, if you go to the I haven't done it, but I'm just saying what I heard. If you go and look at the private lives of, of what uh, the actors put on, onto Instagram, uh, you don't see that same kind of reflection in terms of the values, modesty, for example, as they portray in the, um, in, in the series itself. So the sister is, is saying that uh, non-Muslims are getting affected by what they see, but uh, the actors themselves perhaps need to uh, uh, f uh, bridge a bit, of, a, bit of, a bit of a gap in terms of what they reflect. But I suppose in the end of the day also, it's, it's a job for them and to some extent or the other, I suppose it's going to uh, uh, rub off at, at some point or the other, inshallah. Inshallah, and uh, what we notice, uh, most of them have taken this, their roles seriously and uh, fulfilled it to the best that they could do. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things you notice in the series, Mohan, is that every second or third word, it's like something to do with Allah. Mashallah, inshallah. Yes, everything, even when knocking on the, you know, f formulating those swords, Yulia Haktar Allah, Haydar Allah, you know, there's everything to do with Allah. And that's amazing in itself. Um, I, there's many people that 
still haven't yet grasped uh, the concept of this show, but I'm slowly, slowly starting to get it. Uh, what I've tried to do is with my own funny little humorous series that I have on Instagram where I, I try to bring it into a modern, like if Ertru was in a modern time, like I replaced the horse with a motorcycle. Mm. Uh, we're still using the same greeting and all of these things. Uh, and the older generation who haven't yet taken to it, uh, their grandchildren would show them the videos and they're like, you know, this is from Earth Rule and like, who's this, you know? So, so then they start to, to learn more about it and get hooked on it. I, I, know, I know of one uncle who actually phoned Netflix uh, essay to, to fight with them because a certain season was not available. And he really grew attached to the show. Yeah. So it, it, it just shows that it has made an, a mark on, on, on people in terms of the positive. Because the thing is, Ma, are, like you mentioned, there are many, many shows that are available. But none of them capture you for such a long time. And you know that these episodes are really lengthy. So to capture people for five seasons. I know and, many leaders yeah. who watch it because of the strategy. At, yes. Atul in the, in the series is portrayed as a master strategist, yes. always outfoxing his enemies from the Crusaders, from the Mongols, and also the enemies from within, the turncoats, the, uh, you know, traitors, the, the yeah. traitors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got another call on the line. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Yes, I'm going to ask all those who call in, please turn down the volume on your TV set, otherwise you're not going to be able to hear me and I won't be able to hear you. Assalamu alaikum, you're live on air. Wa alaikum salam. Gee, where are you calling from, brother? Yes, I'm calling from Roshni. Aha, talk to me. Yes, I, I must say this program has uh, united the Muslims and also it makes us feel proud of our history, you know. Mm. Uh, we never knew these characters existed or these people existed and how they've yeah, gripped our lives now. It's, uh, it's really uh, something wonderful. Well, what for you is the main lesson? The main lesson is how the Muslims were succe succeeded in everything, you know, how they, they uh, did everything for Islam and Despite how they... Despite the lack they, of resources and the odds being stacked against them? Definitely. definitely. Even if there were a small amount, just like in Badr, when there were a small amount and how they got victory. Has this made you want to read more about Ottoman history? Definitely. It makes you want to visit Turkey and see Turkey more and read about the Ottomans. Read about the Umayyads, uh, read about the Abbasids. Hmm. All right, brother, Jazakumullah for that. Pleasure. Yes, you know, it, it just, uh, people say that this, this has promoted Turkey, Turkish nationalism and it's also uh, really promoted tourism to Turkey. And, and there's no doubt in that. But yeah. at the same time, it's had a broader benefit, a broader value. It has indeed. And uh, at the Confex, I remember the ambassador of Turkey mentioning as well that she, she specifically mentioned that there are many, many series that are well done and, uh, you know, with higher budgets that manage, that didn't manage to capture the global audience the way Earth Rule has. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go to the next caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Gee, brother, you live on air. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, where are you calling from? From Botswana. Botswana, welcome. Talk to us. I think the main inspiration to Earth to Rule mm. was the the inspiration from Ibn Arabi. Yeah, I was going to come to that, yes. <laughs> Ibn Arabi has been his guide throughout his success in the series, and that has really inspired him. Yeah. And what has inspired you from the series? Uh, yeah, this is the guide of Ibn Arabi. All those lengthy bayans that they give him between. Well, whatever, whenever he was in a problem, mm. uh, he always got inspiration from him. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. Jazakallah. Jazakumullah. Those bayans, those bayans come very timelessly, just, uh, yes. you know, in between Ibn Arabi's bayans and then in later seasons, the, the Khoja, the, the Molana, the, the Imam Sab, mm -hmm. uh, coming in and giving them perspective, quoting relevant Quranic ayat, quoting stories of the Anbiya, quoting stories of the Sahaba. Yes, indeed, Mullah. One of the things also you notice with all of those speeches or, or lectures uh, by Ibn al Arabi and others, uh, the total yaqeen that they had in Allah. In their du'as, many of the times, uh, odds were stacked against them. And the du'as that they would make in the series with so much yakin and belief that the divine help would come their way. And I think that is also something we, we in this generation have, you know, lost, uh, you know, the, realizing the power of du'a. Let's go to next caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. 
Waalaikum salam. Ji, you live on it. Uh, <coughs> I just wanted to say that Ertugul has really changed my life. I've started praying all my salams. Every small task I have, I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I think of Allah, I pray, and I, <coughs> I hope that makes other people Muslims and change their life. I mean, if I may ask you a question, because this question will be in the minds of many people. Why, why is it that this in particular inspired you, in your opinion, you know, not somebody else's talk or a lecture or a book that you may have read or a lesson you may have been taught in Madras or school? Why, why, why is it, in your opinion, that this affected this change in your life? <clears throat> because how they force you, Islam. How they, you know. Mm. All right. Jazakumullah for that, brother. Really appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Let's take one more caller before we go to the break. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum, you're live on air. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. All right, I think uh, either the, the previous caller is still online or there's a caller there. Just before we go for the break, uh, paraphernalia, it's become a big thing, right? The hats. Uh, the ring and then the, the thumb the ring. Thumb one, yeah. But then the thumb ring was for a very particular reason, is to shoot arrows. <laughs> it was. It, it's quite uncomfortable on your, on your thumb. Right. Uh, most of the guys that have it now have it for like fashionable reasons, whatever, but it's quite un uncomfortable. As you mentioned, it has a specific reason uh, f to hold the string of the bow. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots more. And my sister and I are actually in Turkey right now, and I've mentioned, I said, please take an extra bag because you need to get me props for my videos. So uh, <laughs> they need to bring me an armor, another proper sword, and a couple of more of these spoons. You know what? They, <laughs> they used to move around with their spoons they everywhere. They take it out meal time, like. Yeah, it's quite handy if you think yeah. about it because uh, anyways, you know, you visit anyone, if they're having dessert, you're like, hey, <laughs> just move there, let me taste the rest, you know? So it's quite handy. It's interesting how things pick up, right? Because yeah. You, you're a sports fanatic and like, yeah. so if, if, if a sports uh, personality has a particular haircut, then a couple of weeks later you see all the lighties got the same haircut. Mm -hmm. If they wear a particular color shoes, even if it's a hideous color, mm -hmm. everybody picks up. Mm -hmm. Now these hats, I mean, my sister went to Turkey before Ramadan. She bought this for me and she said, you will wear it, finish. Yeah. There's, a, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, compromise on that. Uh, the rings are becoming popular. What else is there in terms of paraphernalia? Uh, well, in Amalu, the horses are quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to the end, guy with the with That the was horses. next level. But eh? now, now, yeah. there's also a financial element to it, right? People are seeing the opportunity and making some good bucks they are. out of selling the stuff. Uh, someone who had visit, visited Turkey recently said that the amounts that we are paying here for guys who bring in this side is, is like exorbitant, exorbitant in terms of the price difference from how much it really costs. So you're right, people have jumped on this wave now and are riding it for as much as they can, but you can't blame them. We'll take our final break. When we come back, we wrap up the discussion on Arturul. Well, welcome back to the council, uh, Bailerim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mentioned up front, and I want to emphasize this again, that the discussion was, was aimed at uh, seeing and trying to understand the phenomenon. And I think in, in that last segment where we had many of the callers, we get a sense of, of why people are gripped and we get a sense of why people uh, feel nice. Yes, is it escapism? Of course. You know, watching anything on, on a series is a bit of escapism in there. Is there dramatization? Is there fiction? I think Brother Nadim very eloquently mentioned that previously. But compared to other things that people may be watching where there's a lot of nudity, promiscuity, frivolity, here there's, there's entrenched lessons like Ijaz mentioned earlier on, always reference to Allah, Aver Allah, uh, Aver Allah. Aver Allah is a kind of inshallah, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Hector Allah and Haider Allah and uh, they, they got a very unique way of saying inshallah. Uh, inshallah yeah, and and hey, mashallah yeah. hey, mashallah and that other one when the, you know when when the when the doctor sub he says uh, yeah, shafi, yeah shafi you know you know starting off so those kind of things especially for youngsters you know it kind of gives off a very good uh, uh, indication as to as to what life you know they pick it up they mimic it but it's it's it's, it's it has that positive yeah. i'm not saying that it's totally free of its negatives but it, it has that positive uh, you just got to be disciplined also you can't be binge watching you can't do it at the time at the expense of your salah mm -hmm. and most people i know in south africa and ramadan and that kind of thing when it was critical yeah. moments but let's talk about the south, Af south african dynamic in the last two or three minutes that we have you're very passionate about making instagram videos <laughs> uh, at the rule based videos yeah. uh, 
like any other craze, so to speak, this will blow over after a while, right? I mean, that's the nature of life. But yeah. whilst it's still there, what, how, how do you analyze it in the South African context? How, how are South Africans relating to it, different age groups? Basically, what I've noticed, Ma, is that, like we mentioned, people are looking for a, a hero in these times, you know? And now they found it in this series with Ertrul and Turgut and Bamzi and all of the, the brothers, the Bays, uh, the Alps, the, uh, you know, all of them together. So what I try to do is get it into a South African context. I, I edit our South African words with it. It's a South African setting for my videos. So, um, but I try to get authenticity as well. If you notice here on the sword itself, when you, um, Ertrul himself <laughs> yeah, yeah. has the tossel from, from Halima Hatun. So I've got this from Miriam Hatun, who's probably watching right now. So there's quite a bit of uh, authenticity in terms of how we try to copy it. A lot of our action scenes that we do uh, mimic some of the, the... And you've seen that some of our colleagues are quite fit uh, for the fighting roles at the radio. So it's, it's, it, everyone's enjoying it. It takes a little bit of time. We even got uh, Abdullah Beat, uh, South African martial arts kickboxing champion, to join us in one of the clubs. So it's really cool that people are, are joining the, the movement in terms of... Uh, being part of these videos and enjoying it, uh, I try to put one of the, my videos online first just to test the waters, how it will be received overseas. And it's been a phenomenal response, Malana. I was shocked. I put in one of the Earth Rural communities and people from all over the world actually could relate to it. So I said, okay, I, I was making these videos specifically for a South African audience and I see that it's, it's universal. So I think when people can relate to something, then they get to attach to it very quickly. And I think that's basically what's happening with the series itself. Okay, Ijaz Bay, any concluding remarks from yourself? Um, from my side, uh, you know what, I'm really enjoying it. Getting said that it's coming towards the end now. Uh, you know that once they move to a certain area, uh, no spoilers, don't worry. Uh, but I've taken a lot of lessons from it, Molana. I've learned server patience, and uh, there are so many lessons, countless lessons, respect for parents, uh, respect for youngsters, love for your loved ones, uh, your, you know, your family members to a different degree, uh, you know, continuous because they're always struggling and striving. So that every minute feels like the last. And maybe that's something we can take away from it, that they loved every moment as if it was the last. So their duas were more, in, more intense. Uh, the love they showed to their loved ones were more intense. And maybe that's something we can take away from it. Hazrat Lere, we thank you for your time uh, this evening on the program. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah. To all the bays and to all the hartoons out there, Jazakumullah for tuning in. As I said up front, and I'll conclude on that, we wanted to unpack the dynamic of the phenomenon. What is it about this particular series that has gripped uh, people, that has captivated people? And I think it's, it's the lessons behind it. Uh, it comes back to the core values of Islam, and it highlights that if your, your beliefs are correct and your conviction is there and your values are right, then you can prevail even though the odds are stacked against you. And I think in the midst of so much of despondency and despair in the Ummah and in the world, uh, this has kind of resonated with people, uh, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. On that note, until uh, next time, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Sahabat, bayad Allah.